Hey, how's it going? So I just got back from, um, I think my third ride back after a few weeks basically off after getting doored, um, three and a half weeks ago now. And this is the first time I've done a workout of some sort. Um, about a month ago, you know, leading into when I got doored, um, I was feeling pretty good about my training and definitely getting in some good workouts. Um, I was like planning on doing the Diablo challenge and feeling pretty confident that I would be able to um, set a new course record on that uh, at that event, which is, you know, uh, something that I'm into if you follow me on Strava or, or um, have looked at any of my past results. Like I have the record there from a while ago and I thought it would be fun to go and, and break it. Um, we'll see how it goes because, you know, the last three weeks I haven't really been able to train very much. But anyway, um, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to do what I can to like work with my body to try to get in shape in the next few weeks and, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, I'll probably probably do the challenge. I'm pretty sure that it, unless uh, my back flares up again, I'll, I'll be going out there to it. But um, it's a question mark uh, to me right now what kind of shape I'll be able to be in at that time. So hopefully I can be in good shape and ride pretty fast, but we'll, we'll see. I would love to, but you know, uh, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, if I wanna be in good shape, um, like I, I'm, I'm in good shape, but you know, if I want to be in good shape to ride uphill as fast as I can, obviously I have to do some harder workouts and my back's been like loosening up a little bit. It's still like kind of uncomfortable and painful sometimes, but it's not like totally debilitating like it was a week or two ago. Uh, anyway, um, so I wanted to just kind of share with you my basic, like the, the two main workouts that I would focus on if I was preparing for a medium to longer hill climb, like 20, 30, 50, 60 minutes. Um, so like for me, the Diablo, cha the Diablo challenge is maybe like 45 minutes, give or take. Uh, for a lot of people, like going under an hour is a really good, um, you know, benchmark to go for. And a lot, you know, you have to be like pretty fit to go under an hour. And so anyway, um, if you're in good enough shape to do an event like that, you're, you know, you're gonna go out and do like a 30, 40, 60 minute hill climb effort. Um, you know, obviously over a long period of time, you want to build up, you know, mileage and strength and just good aerobic fitness overall. But in the last like three to six weeks, when you're getting ready for any goal event, like if you're really trying to focus on that particular event, um, I would increasingly, you know, build a foundation that supports the type of fitness that you need for that event, but increasingly narrow it down so that you're focusing on the intensity or the range of intensities that will be, um, you know, determining your your outcome, the the, the outcome of, of your effort on that particular day. So in this case, like if, if I'm gonna go out and do a hard threshold effort, uh, I wanna focus my workouts on, you know, about that power or intensity, plus or minus about 10%. So, um, the, you know, in the past when I've done, um, you know, workouts for road races or hill climbs or time trials, um, or I remember specifically when I was getting ready for the Diablo challenge, when I set the record several years ago, um, like the two main workouts that I focused on were doing long sustained threshold efforts that were at about the goal power that I had for the event. Um, so I might do, you know, 15 minute repeats, for example, uh, or, or, or laps up and down a hill somewhere and do that like at around goal pace or just like a hair above. Um, and I would do shorter intervals that were three to five minutes long at 10 to 15% higher power than my goal power for the event. So the sustained threshold efforts, you know, let's say it's like three by 15 minutes or four by 15 minutes, um, at around your goal pace, uh, or, or power or intensity level, that's going to be really good at making you much more comfortable at that, you know, level of intensity and making sure your body's like more efficient at that type of, um, effort level. And if you can do that repeatedly, if you do like four by 15 minutes and you have like relatively short recovery in between, um, that'll, you know, definitely target the energy system that's going to be determining how fast you can go on, on race day. Um, and it will increase your like, uh, cognitive, like comfort, like how, how comfortable your brain is at assessing that level of intensity. And, um, if your brain is used to experiencing you riding at, you know, whatever your goal power is. So for me, like, let's say it's 400 Watts. Like if I can do 
three or four by 15 minutes at 400 watts, my brain will become increasingly comfortable tolerating that level of power output. And it's, you know, sure it's hard, especially three, three, the third or fourth interval in, but as hard as it is, my brain, you know, will become more comfortable thinking like, okay, this, this kind of sucks, but we can, we can handle this. And so, you know, when you're just a little bit fresher and a little bit more motivated and a little bit more psyched up on race day, maybe if I can do a workout that's three or four by 15 minutes, at 400 watts on race day hopefully i can do you know 400 watts for 45 minutes up diablo for example um and then so i might do that once a week um or maybe like every other week subbing in maybe a longer uh just below threshold type of effort so like i might ride out to diablo and go pretty hard up the climb like almost at race pace but just a little bit below it um because obviously you can't do like a totally peak effort every week but let's say my goal pace is like 400 watts maybe i'll go out there and shoot for like 380 or something like that and if i can go out and do um a training ride to the mountain go up the climb at 380 and it's like it's hard but it's very manageable um on race day if i'm just going like 20 watts you know, harder, uh, but it's you know, not a ton in the grand scheme of things. If I'm totally fresh and I'm totally motivated and um, a little bit better recovered on race day, you know, I'll probably be able to handle it. Um, so the other workout that I would focus on doing is, you know, going well above race pace. So, you know, if I'm gonna do 400 watts, I wanna do repeats at like, you know, five minute intervals, let's say at 450 or 460 or even higher. Um, or if I'm doing shorter intervals, like if I do five by three minutes, let's say, I might even shoot for, you know, 500 watts for, for me. Um, so that's like 20% more power and more intense than race base. And, you know, clearly if I'm doing um, a full climb up Mount Diablo at about 400 watts, like my, I'm not gonna be pinned at 400 watts the whole way up. I'll intermittently be going a little bit harder so through some of the switchbacks, through some of the steeper bits, I might get out of the saddle and I might be pushing like 450 for a few moments here and there. And the more comfortable I am going, you know, much harder than than my average race pace, uh, the more I'll be able to tolerate those little changes in pace if that seems like the, the, the optimal pacing at that moment in time. Um, so if I were, you know, suggesting how to prepare for, you know, a long time trial or hill climb like the Diablo Challenge, let's say, um, I would focus on, especially in the last like two, three, four weeks out from the event, um, think about what kind of intensity you will need to be able, be able to do to, you know, achieve whatever your goal is. Or even if you don't know, but you're just like working towards it, focus on doing um, three or four by 12 to 15 minutes, uh, or even three by 20 minutes, let's say. Find a hill that you like and do some repeats or do some like laps on a, on a loop where there's like an uphill and then a descent back down to the start or something like that. So do that once a week and aim for the, um, the highest average power that you can feel like you're doing without killing yourself for the time that you're doing the intervals. And do the same thing another time in the week um, where you're doing like three, four, or five minute intervals. Um, probably I would think about like doing five by three minutes, four by four minutes, or three by five minutes. Uh, maybe four by five minutes, but generally like 15-ish minutes of VO2 max work seems to be um, enough that you get a lot of good quality stress out of it that'll encourage your body to get fitter. Um, but it's not so much that it's like um, gonna kill you or so much that the quality of the efforts goes down. Cause obviously let's say you were doing six by five minutes. You can't do six by five minutes at the same intensity that you could do six by three minutes or five by three minutes. So the quality of your efforts is gonna go down, which is fine if that's what you're shooting for. Um, but I think to get like really high-end aerobic capacity work that's even, um, you know, gonna really stress your your maximal um, cardiac output and maximal aerobic uh, power output, it's probably better to shoot for, you know, somewhere around that 15 minute range. And if you have a power meter and you uh, aren't sure exactly what power to target, just think about how long the intervals are and think about uh, what your peak power is for about two to three times that duration. So if you're doing, um, let's say four minute intervals, take a look at what your peak 10 minute power is like at all in the last six to 12, 12 months. And whatever that is, maybe use that as a benchmark for like what you could probably do repeats at um, for four minutes, let's say. Um, and I don't know, I mean, that's about it. Like you, 
you, you definitely want to keep doing some other rides. So if we were doing that kind of training plan, like maybe on Wednesday, you go out and do some hard view to max intervals. And then on the weekend, you do longer threshold intervals. But on top of that, you probably do like two or three easier rides that are mostly just like steady endurance. And you could throw in a few drills, like you could do a couple of sprints or a few bigger efforts that are just kind of maintaining some high level neurological recruitment um, and strength. But you want to make sure that all of your auxiliary rides are, you know, pretty relaxed. Like you might do one or two easy rides, one or two kind of medium endurance rides, but they should not feel like hard workouts. You should focus most of your like real intensity on just those couple of high quality rides each week. Um, and you know, as always try to make sure that you're sleeping well, that you're drinking enough, that you're getting enough electrolytes, especially if it's hot out and you're sweating a lot, uh, and make sure that after each of your hard rides that you get plenty of good, uh, recovery, uh, food to like, make sure that you can take full advantage of those workouts. Um, anyway, so I, you know, I really hope that I am able to regain good fitness quickly and hopefully, um, we'll be able to ride the Diablo challenge relatively quickly. Uh, and right now, I mean, just after the last few weeks of having some back pain, like just, just being able to ride feels amazing. Um, and like today I did, uh, three by like about 12 minutes up, um, golf course and Grizzly Peak uh, up in Tilden Park and then down South Park. So it's like a really quick, like you know, 12 minutes up and then like four minutes down. And so I can do repeats there and the whole workout, you know, like by, from door to door, like when I started to finish is like an hour 40 or something like that. So for me, that's one of my favorite workouts. I love it. It's very efficient. And also in this particular case, very relevant to the type of fitness that I w would like to, um, you know, have in, in a few weeks time. But anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.